Welcome back YouTube, happy Monday, hope you are all doing well. In today's video, we're talking about computers and more specifically, four important key components of computers that are important when considering buying a new laptop, either for school, for work, or even just a simple explanation of what these components are and what they actually do. So if you stick around until the end of the video, I promise you'll have a solid grasp and understanding of what each of these four components are, what they do in the computer, and why they're important when considering buying a new laptop. But before we start the video, I'm going to make a quick trip to the post office because I'm picking up a package that I'm 90% sure about and will be relevant to the topic of this video. So let's go. Sunset slow, hey, you know you should stay for the night. Okay, so by this point I already kind of know what this package is. It's so big! Ugh. As always, got my trusty key knife. Didn't really cut anything. So yeah, now you've seen it, it is the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. All right, so let's just uh, start unwrapping this thing. It feels nice. Also feels like $3,000, so there's that. All right, so I have the MacBook 16 inch running now and I'm just going to do a little setup and then I'm going to test it a little bit before I get into the meat of the video. See you soon. All right, that is done and now back to the studio. All right, and we're back. Now that was shot on a different day because I wasn't able to get this part of the video out until afterwards. Now obviously I can't show it on camera right now because I'm using it as part of my workstation for recording this video, but I will be using it as an example in all of the explanations that I'm going to give in this video. All right, so here are the four main parts of a computer that you should look for and adjust for your needs. The CPU, the GPU, the RAM, and the storage. All right, now talking about the first component of the computer, the CPU, which stands for Central, po Central Processing Unit. This is like arguably the most important part of the computer because it carries out all of the instructions that you tell it to when running programs and protocols. And I don't know where I'm going with this, but it runs basically everything you want the computer to do and it does it in a snap. Now when you're looking at CPUs, there's two big producers of these CPUs that you can look out for. There's Intel and AMD. And usually a lot of like the Intel ones will have the Intel inside sticker somewhere on the laptop and you'll know it's an Intel processor. So the three major components of the CPU to look for are the generation, clock speed, and number of cores. Now for example, in my new MacBook, I have a 2.3 gigahertz octa-core, which is eight cores, 
i9 processor and that sounds complicated but it's really quite simple once you break all the numbers down. So if you like the basic gist of it, a typical good fast processor will be around 2.3 to 3.5 gigahertz and if your computer's number is in that range then it's good enough. One thing to note about is the turbo boost which is the highest speed your computer can run for short periods of time. Now the turbo speed of most computers will range anywhere from 4 GHz all the way up until 5 GHz but that number isn't too important as compared to the base number because the turbo boost only turns on when the processor needs it to do all of those calculations really fast in a short amount of time. If you put your computer in turbo speed all the time then your computer is probably gonna die within like half a year to a year. In other words, it's not a good idea. Now what usually will happen for the turbo is that you'll do one task that really needs that high clock speed in a computer and the computer will boost the clock speed up to the max or however much it needs and then cool down and come down to the base speed. The number of cores will typically be 4 for an i5, 4 to 6 for an i7, and 8 for an i9. You probably won't have to worry about the number of cores because whatever processor you have will already have the optimal number of cores in it. As for the generation, anything from an i5 to an i7 to an i9 from Intel are all great options, but any equivalent from other companies would be great as well. If you're buying processors from other companies other than Intel though, I would recommend checking out the reviews and other things from really experienced computer websites and blogs because you want to make sure your CPU is good. Alright, that was a lot to take in for the CPU, but we're done with the CPU talk and let's go on to the GPU now. The GPU stands for Graphical Processing Unit or Graphics Processing Unit or something, some combination of those letters. And if you're a gamer or graphics oriented user, then this is going to be the second most important part of your computer. Now if you have a really great CPU, but you have a crappy GPU, then your computer will really struggle when running apps such as Fortnite, PUBG, Final Cut, and any of the other Adobe apps like Photoshop. Two of the major players in this area are Nvidia who makes the GTX series and AMD who makes the Radeon series. Now when it comes out to picking your laptop, if you're in stores, you can ask and see on the plaque to see what types of GPUs you can upgrade your laptop to. If you're online, you can see in the store selection picker which, lap which laptop will have which GPUs and if you can upgrade the GPUs in your laptop to make it more customizable. For example, in my MacBook Pro, the base model has a Radeon 5300 series GPU. Now I upgraded mine to the highest graphics spec possible which is the Radeon 5500 series because I do video editing and other sorts of graphics intensive work so it makes sense for me to upgrade my graphics card to the highest option possible. Now everyone's situation is different. If you're a student who only does light browsing and light classwork and light video editing and stuff like that then a light small graphics processor will, will be sufficient. If you're using it for more intense work though, like more video editing or photo editing or things like that, or even gaming. If you're on a Windows laptop and you're planning on gaming, then you should probably get a better graphics card so your computer doesn't die when it tries to run through all of those graphics and it can't because the processor is too weak. Now the last two things are more of a standard thing than a customizable configuration, but RAM and internal storage are still really important things to understand. RAM stands for Random Access Memory and is basically the higher the number, the more stuff you can run at once. For people who usually only have one or two or three things open, like one to five Chrome tabs, having a large RAM isn't all that necessary. But for people who like running a bajillion things at once, like a ton of Chrome tabs, maybe a game, maybe a browser, maybe other things, then getting a bigger RAM would be a good idea. So having a high RAM number is crucial if you want to be running like a bajillion things at the same time like Chrome or CADs or editing software like Photoshop or video editing. And even for people who'd like to have a ton of things running at the same time, 32 gigabytes should be plenty. I myself for my MacBook Pro only have 16 gigs of RAM in the computer and even that because I only tend to run a couple things at the same time on my laptop I don't need a higher number like 32 or 64. There is a 64 gigs option but like there is no reason for any normal person for needing 64 gigs of RAM. 
At the very least, I'd recommend getting 8 gigs of RAM and the most recommendation I'd have is for the 16 gigs option because that allows you to get just the right amount of things that you can have open on your laptop and still have many things open and not having any performance issues. The last thing is pretty simple, it's internal storage which is basically just how many things you can have stored on your computer. Things like videos, photos, applications, you name it, that's probably going to be stored on the hard drive. Just think of it like memory. Your short-term memory is things that you can recall really quickly and your long-term memory is stored where you can like have things like how to eat or riding a bike or swimming and things like that. Just transfer that concept onto a computer and that's what you'll get. The RAM is the short-term memory and the internal storage is the long-term memory. So what's the recommended amount you'd ask? Well, in my laptop, I have one terabyte of SSD storage, mainly because I'm a video editor. And again, I need that massive storage so I can just store all my files. And after it's all done, I'll just dump it onto my hard drive and then refill up that one terabyte of storage. Most people though will only need between 256 to 512 gigabytes. So yeah, those are the four components that I think everybody should know when it comes to computers. All right, and with that said, that is the end of today's video. Thank you for watching till the end. If you liked it, please smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel down below by hitting that red button and taking the bell notification on your way out so you'll be notified whenever I release a new video. I also do Instagram, which is right here, the.horoscope, where I post things and stories daily, so go join the fun over there if you'd like. Once again, thank you for watching my video today. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.